off with the artist from our uh, The Ghost of Orion album cover, Mr. Eloran Cantor. Good evening. Hello, how are you? I'm very well. How are you? I'm fine. Sorry for being late. A certain someone was way past his bedtime. Okay, well, that's absolutely fine. Um, how's lockdown be treating you? The same old question everybody gets asked at this time of year. Lockdown, good, bad, neither here nor there? Uh, I mean, day to day, things have been, I mean, as far as the work is concerned, things have been pretty much the same. I mean, you know, release dates for albums have been pushed back significantly. Some of them have been pushed back for like three times already. Really? But I'm usually, uh, my schedule is planned a few months in advance. So, I mean, for the immediate future, nothing changed much, but you can never know because I work with musicians and most of them have lost like what, 80% of their income with no touring. So who knows? Oh dear. So you work. Tons of them are just right now in the, in the recording studio working on a new album instead of touring. Yeah, it, it, it seems like 20, 2021, there's going to be a lot of new albums released. Yeah. <laughs> 2022, everybody will want to be on the road. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, I'm not only that for next year as far as touring is concerned. But anyway, so getting back to your work and the things that you do, um, do you work from home? Have you got your own studio? Do you have to travel to your studio? How does it work with you? I've got my own studio, but I pretty much have uh, like two setups, one here at home and one in the studio. Where I'm, both of them are located in Berlin, but it's a big city, so it's like 30 minutes drive. So I pretty much share my time between both of them. Plus everything that has to do with uh, the print shop is over there. So I travel there, I mean, often just to handle, you know, stuff like, accepting um, inventory and stuff like that as well. Yeah. But pretty much I've been working from home and working from the studio without uh, any significant difference between the two of them. Okay. So our cover um, for The Ghost of Orion, how long did it take you to create something like that? Because, you know, I, I've been able to zoom in really close, really high definition on my computer. And it still doesn't pixelate out. You know, it's really high quality. There's loads of fine detail. How long does it take to create something like that? Oh, I can't remember. We'll have to go through the old uh, email history to find out. But I think actually painting the actual thing took maybe like a couple of weeks. Could be. I can't remember because I'm really bad at keeping track and uh, <laughs> trying to see uh, how long tasks take me. So. God knows, could be a, a week, could be two, could be a month. Can't yeah. remember. And we've worked but on this. The hard part is coming up with a concept. That How usually did you do that? More time. How did you come up with the concept? I usually co I come up with concepts before I go to bed because I try to fall asleep and then you get um, like sensory deprivation because you're lying in bed, everything is dark, you don't hear anything, you don't see anything, you don't move. And then you're trying to, you, when you're trying to shut your brain off, then yeah. your brain starts running and think about like horrible, weird, bizarre things. So this is why I usually um, get to spend some time with the lyrics beforehand and go through them back, back in time again. So once the time comes to start working on the album cover, I've got everything just going on in circles in my mind in any way. So when I'm trying to fall asleep, all of that stuff that's been bubbling in the back will rise up and just start, um, I mean, transforming and flashing ideas visually. So this is usually what, come, what, what happens. And then I, I'm having like a worse time trying to fall asleep. Because then I have yeah, the eureka moment and then you have to fall asleep. So. Yeah. That's all of them. Yeah, and I, if I'm right, if I remember correctly, did you mention that your wife was you used as a model for the, the woman on the front cover? Yeah, she modeled it for me. Uh, she, I used her as a, as a reference photo I, right here in the living room. 
I just wrapped, uh, what was it? I think it was a, like a bed sheet around it just to get a basic sense of, you know, how a fabric will drape around her. It was yeah. like blue bed sheet. And she was just wearing like normal clothes and everything. It wasn't like what you see on the all the album. So the the woman on the album does her face look anything like your wife's face? Or yeah, yeah. because when you use a model and then you try to uh, change things up a little bit. It just looks weird. So when I'm using like a direct reference with uh, with a model, I don't change it. I don't change much when it comes to the facial features. Because like one millimeter, take the eye one millimeter uh, to the right or to the left and everything just looks weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you first got in touch with me via email mm -hmm. a few years ago now, right? I can't remember when. I think it was basically, could be just before uh, the last record. I mean, the one before it, uh, Feel the Misery, or yeah. maybe just afterwards. Yeah, so it's about five, five or six years ago, maybe. Could be. But finally, we got to work together at long last. And so you finished our work and we all loved it. And uh, the fans seem to love it. You know, it looks great on a beer can. Um, as we've both, uh, we've both proved this evening. There we go, everybody. Look how lovely it looks. And it non-slip cans as well. Um, so you've been keeping busy after this. You've done a few more album covers, I'm guessing. Um, can you tell us anything that you've been working on or is it top secret? I don't think much of it. I mean, some of it, I think, is just... I'm basically waiting for the band to come out uh, with the press releases announcing uh, who's the personnel that's going to be involved with the record. But, uh, I mean... I've been working. I just released uh, new album covers this year for what was it? Uh, Loud Blast. Um, we did Testament this year. Heaven Shall Burn. Havoc. Tons of others. And I've been working with Devin Townsend on a record for like close to three years now. Maybe even four or five. Can't remember. Wow. It's in the back burner, but it's been going on for a few years. Yeah, oh, but I've got tons of stuff planned out, but I think it's too late uh, for me to remember anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's first thing in the morning, maybe then I'll remember. It's great, though, that you're in such high demand then, because I guess you don't really stop working. You must take a bit of time off at the weekend to spend with your family, but you must be really busy every day. <laughs> I should. No, but you know how it's like. With uh, like a creative lifestyle, you basically tend to find excuses to walk through the weekend, yeah. to walk regular hours. But yeah, whenever I try to fall back on a schedule, I think it benefits me greatly. Because now with, I mean, being a father and having a family, it's just so easy to miss out on so much. And every, and every day, you know, like new things pop out and new things happen and you want to be there. So this is another great um, advantage of working from home. So even if I'm working, I get to be there. I mean, when he when he's doing something for the first time. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's always no lovely to see that stuff, because once once they've grown up and gone past that stage, if you've missed it, you're not going to see it again. Yeah, exactly. Do you find it the same as well? Yeah, definitely. Um, I I missed a few things in the very early days because we were, you know, we were still touring. Um, she was only two weeks old when I went off to um, uh, 70,000 Tons of Metal tour, which was the, the, the cruise ship around the Caribbean. And it was awful to leave, you know, because it's old. That's nothing for a child. Um, but, but obviously also at that age, they're not really doing much. So, you know, you, you're not missing you know any speeches you know i saw that you know i was there for the first words and the first steps and, and all that sort of stuff and it's great you know and lockdown when the, when the schools closed mm -hmm. here in march um you know we spent months together and it was amazing you know because her reading and writing has come on so much now and she's she's just got um like a a class award for um mathematics she's really good at numbers 
um, which is great. You know, I was, I'm terrible at numbers. She's amazing at numbers. So when she brings homework home, I can't really help her with the numbers, but I'm happy to do the English with her. But that's fine. That's fine. How um, old? Pardon? How old is she now? She's uh, she's nine on Christmas Eve. All right. So yeah, she was diagnosed with cancer um, just before her sixth birthday, right. um, and then we spent like a year and a half in hospital, and she had chemotherapy and radiotherapy and two huge operations to remove various um, internal organs that the cancer had affected. Um, and she's a scar down here and a scar across here, and she's got four tattoos from when, um, when they set up the radiotherapy machine. It has to be so precise. So they have like a north, south, east, west tattoo on her body, and the lasers line up with that, and she must not move. And that was every day for three weeks, and that was really tough. Um, yeah, but but you know things things are things are much better now. So so we're, you know we, you know we were in a terrible place, but we're in a much better place now. She's loving school and doing really well. So that's uh, that's a good thing. Yeah. Plus maybe having some time off uh, from school with the lockdown just allowed you some more time to be with her doing oh, this. Yeah. Yeah, it's brilliant. But it's also nice that she's back at school because um, I had no free time when she was when she wasn't at school because I would have her from eight o'clock in the morning to eight o'clock in the evening. So while other people are sat at home, not going to work they're, and they're able to be really creative because they've got time on their hands. I was unable to do anything because I had no time on my hands. And it was only when she went back to school, I could catch up with all the interviews and the promo for the band. And start doing a bit of writing for myself. I wrote nothing from the middle of March this year up until mm -hmm. up until September. I did no writing, no artwork, no photography, nothing at all, um, because I was just too busy. So now, thankfully, they're back at school, um, even though we are in the middle of a second lockdown, and, yeah. and and it's just given me free time to to be able to catch up on on all kinds of things and to to feel the creative juices flowing again. What's the is the feel like the creative or j the job part is more important than you thought it was before or spending time with the family was something that you ended up saying oh you know what I should have put a bit more emphasis on that I, I always thought I had a good balance mm -hmm. um, yeah because I, I never take family for granted I never take the band for granted either you know I, I treat each one in a special way because they are special you know it's a privilege to be in a band that is selling records all over the world you know because there's we all know that there's thousands and thousands of bands out there who don't get that opportunity you know they only play the local venues um they sell finance records and they struggle but they love they love it and they do it for the love of it we yeah. are lucky to have two great record labels behind us um and you know we've been doing it for 30 years and we absolutely love it that's why we still do it i often get asked you know this is the 30th anniversary of my dying bride how have you kept going where, where do you find your motivation it's because we love being in a rock band writing metal songs you know we're still doing it why would we stop you know it's, yeah. it's a great thing to be able to to do and to share it worldwide you know people all around the globe send us feedback about not just albums but individual songs and individual lyrics you know, mm -hmm. I get tons of feedback about the stuff that I do and that, that's amazing and it makes me feel like the things I've done were worthwhile and weren't just throw away you know spend five minutes on a song that'll be fine you know we spend a long time writing the songs and then a long time recording the songs and then after we've done that we check the songs and you know we play them in the car we play them in at home we play them with headphones on and if there's anything not quite right we go back and change it because mm -hmm. we think it's not quite right everyone else will think it's not quite right so we try and spend a lot of time on them to make sure they're as good as they possibly can be plus i guess you're not doing the whole like proper touring thing you're just basically doing mostly festivals so you're not experiencing the grind of, you know, going from backstage salami to a backstage salami to a backstage salami. Oh, yeah. We did. We toured a little bit 
more in the olden days, the sort of mm -hmm. mid 90s um, and early 2000s. And it was fine, but on the longer tours, it does become a bit boring and a bit laborious because you forget which town you're in. Um, the show. Salami, that's the, like the only constant. Yeah, yeah, the shows were exciting still. Um, but you just weren't sure where you were going to next. Um, but y over the last sort of 10 or 15 years even, we've really cut down the touring um, because it's hard work and it's it, it's just a laborious task. Um, and so we'll only do maybe 15 or 20 shows a year. For us, that's plenty, that's fine. Um, but you, you, know, you see other bands doing 150 shows a year and I just think, oh, my God. I mean, there are worse jobs to do in the world, of course. Sure. Uh, you know, having an office as having a stage as your office, you know, isn't bad. Um, being worshipped by fans. Um, but having to play the same songs every night, you know, and jumping on the bus and traveling all the time. You know, it, it, it was too much for us. So we, we cut it right down and we enjoy it much more now. It's much more pleasurable knowing that. You know, so. we, pick, we pick which shows we do. You know, we don't have a tour manager who comes up and says, right, here's what you're playing. Mm -hmm. um, bring your passport. <laughs> we work with our tour manager and our promoter and we say, look, can we do this festival? And can we do this festival? We've never done this one before. Can we try and get into that one and maybe play territories we haven't been to very often? And, you know, working with our promoter and uh, and the tour manager were able to pick and choose where we play, which is amazing. You know, um, it's such a privilege. And so that's why I, I never abuse my position in the band. Um, and, I, you know, when we play live and when we meet the fans afterwards, when they want an autograph, we sign an autograph. If they want a photo, we, we pose for a photo. We don't ever dismiss them as time wasters or, you know, anything like that. We know that they've spent money to come and see us. And if we can sign as much stuff as we can, we will do. And you, you get people who show up with every, sing, every single album and they want every one of them signing. And you think, wow, OK, here we go. And you sign all, all of them because, you know, if I was a fan of a band and I took my entire collection to be signed, I would love it if they signed it. I would expect maybe not for them all to sign every one, that would just be mind blowing. Uh, but we try and do that um, and you know, put smiles on people's faces. It's not that difficult really to sign your name. Yeah, but I guess, as you said, because of uh, you being selective when it comes to your touring schedule allows you guys to not feel the, I mean, being burnt out. I mean, when it comes to each and every one of these aspects of the band, because you're not feeling burnt out on the logistics or nothing burnt out creatively you don't feel like you need to start the cycle again and meet fans again and sign everything again because it's like so sporadic and there's a little bit of like breathing distance between them that you get to enjoy it yeah i mean i do uh, exhibitions in metal festivals and even for, uh, i do them like maybe once or twice a year not only my birth on next year. I mean, I had a few planned for this year, but obviously nothing happened. And I'm trying to hold off on booking them for next year, but let's see in 2022. But I felt a little bit of a taste of what it's like to be uh, in a situation where you spend like most of your days on the logistics and then there's like showtime for like a m very minor part of it. And then it's like, you get how much of a grind each and every job could be regardless of, like you said, I mean, there's, there are worse jobs out there, but that yeah. can be a good as well. Yeah, you're true.